Scott McCauley, Angelo Smith courtside, and we are underway on Summit TV. Florida Gulf Coast continues the tap. Rob Quaintance has the basketball in his hands. And it looks like IUPUI. It looks like a man, but it really isn't a man, and it starts <laughs> off with a five-second violation. Great D by Gary Patterson. And that's the same as I think we saw last, last game against Western Michigan. Start, they come out here in that fake man-to-man, -man and you know, they're able to get that pressure right off the bat. It kind of throws off the team. They as expected a, that two, As three a point zone. guard. Yeah. So there's the first turnover of the game. George Hill brings it across the timeline into the hands of Pettiford, who has been simply brilliant the last two games, scoring 32 points over the last two games. There's Patterson out top. Pettiford, he's been aggressive as of late, misses everything, and it's Adler able to pull down the weak side rebound. You want to see Billy Pettiford use that backboard on that shot right there. Nice stutter step on the baseline move, and Casey Woolham has the game's first points. Little hesitation, he gets around the defender. IEPY didn't get a very good job of getting back on that play right there. Billy Pettiford missed that layup. He should have tried to hustle back down there and make that defensive play. We're approaching the 19 minute mark, just underway from the jungle. Very cold outside, but things have been hot in this gymnasium where IUPUI has not lost this season. And IUPUI with a traveling violation, first turnover of the game. Let's look at here, this travel right here. I, huh, did they look like a solid drop step move for me. Sure did, and I, I, I thought maybe they'd call it on Hill, but it was a good move by him as well. Yeah. Coach Hunter was probably okay to ask, what did he do? Baseline pass and Adler slicing into the lane has his first two points. The 6'7 senior gives Florida Gulf Coast an early four to nothing lead. As you kind of tempted to take that charge, I think you're a little too far underneath the bucket and able to get that shot off. Montgomery for three, no good. Rebound, Quaintance. And here comes Florida Gulf Coast. IUPUI settling back into that zone. Eagles with the basketball and the early lead here tonight. This is a team that is playing the ninth and final road game during a stretch. That is incredible for any team, but it's not unusual for a team having their first go around in Division I as the shot is no good. That was Woolup. Yeah, teams like that, you know, they you got other big time schools that, you know, pay them to come and, and play them, and they stepped up for the challenges. There's Pettiford with the nice baseline move. So Billy, and we saw this on Saturday, very aggressive, looking for a shot, and he's really aggressive on that quick step down on the baseline. And best believe the coach Hunter's been telling him, hey, you've been playing well these past two games. Go on out there, keep on producing, and do what you do. The Eagles with the basketball. Pass down in the corner, unable to handle its barrows. Well, he's looking for all sorts of help. Finally getting his acquaintance. Pass out to the wing. That's Barrows right there. I misspoke earlier. Gets his own shot. Rebound kept alive. Adler couldn't hold it. Here comes George Hill. Boy, look at the speed by Hill. Trying to go around the defender. Can't do it. Good quick hands from Quaintons. And Connor will have IUPUI reset the offense. Drew finds himself wide open from the baseline and hits. And, and Drew Connor can hit that shot. He'll hit that, that baseline shot on a consistent basis whenever he gets the opportunity to shoot it. There's a foul called against IUPUI. And we're talking about the Eagles and this night game road trip they're completing as there's a look at the foul. Gary Patterson gets called with the cheapy out front. Actually, they called it on Austin Montgomery, rather. That is his first, team's first. You know, IPFW is a team that found themselves now in the Summit League entering D1 play. And you saw them would have just a handful of home games. A lot of these teams, you make this adjustment, you're forced to go on the road. It's like you said, Angelo, it's a chance to make some money, build up that program. Yep. And when it comes down to when you get to that home, you have enough experience. Oh, there is wow. a 25-foot alley-oop pass from Quaintance to Adler. Adler's looking very active this first couple of minutes here. I'm, I'm liking this game, the way he's able to attack that rim. Pettiford can't get the shot, gets his own rebound. Ball kicked out, Patterson with the pump fake. Ball is tipped and knocked out of bounds. And see, Scott, you see the way that Billy's going to the, to the bucket strong. What he needs to do is either use that backboard and lay it up, or he needs to go on there and jam that ball. Even though he's throwing out floater, you know, that's not going to get it done. Substitutions are made. John Avery checks into the game. Billy Pettiford takes a seat. And also into the game, Delvin Franklin, a 6'1 junior from Houston, is in for Florida Gulf Coast. Adam Liddell defending down low. There's Avery able to go over Liddell. 
6'7 senior couldn't challenge the shot from the sophomore. And you see the difference between the way John Avery went up there strong. He was able to float that ball, almost kind of like a float or hook shot over there. He was able to shoot that with confidence and get the ball to go in the bucket. Has those long arms. Avery's able to really get his way to the hoop with those arms. George Hill challenging the pass, comes away with it over the head pass, but he's going to throw it away. And he knew that he that someone was going to play tonight. Adler and Liddell, a couple of local kids. Liddell, number four. And now checking to the game is Adler, number 21. Normally in the starting lineup, but Adler is coming off of the bench. So both Hoosiers are in the game right now. Liddell with the ball in his hands. Passes out top to Quaintance. You can see Colt Hunter's come out with a lot more pressure. IEP1 with pressure for the Colts. Get them out there a little bit so they see what they can do for the perimeter. There's Liddell with the basketball. Cross court into his point guard's hands. 13 on the clock. Adler has a way out top. Better hurry up and trigger in this offense. Franklin passes up a shot, so it's Quaintance who fires and hits it. His first bucket, and as the shot clock winds down, Florida Gulf Coast comes away with a bucket, and they lead it nine to six. And that always hurts when so you get it down to that red zone, that 10 minutes or that 10 second less, and they're able to get that shot up with four seconds left. There's Avery slashing into the lane, and he will go to the lane and shoot a pair. Foul is called on Yavni Neptune. He just checked into the game. That will be his first, and so John Avery will go to the stripe to shoot a pair. And a lot of times when you see a move like that, Scott, as a player, you don't want to focus on whether you get fouled or not. You almost want to shoot as though the guy's not there at all. John Avery, this whole season, has done a good job of getting to the line, but he's also been finishing. I like George Hill. George Hill's known to be able to finish that ball with, with, while getting fouled to John Avery. <laughs> got taking notes from George and been able to do the same thing. And, and that's not a bad guy to take some notes no, from. not at all. <laughs> Watch the way that George finishes, even the way down the last couple of games, the way Billy Pettiford's been able to finish. Yes. The sophomore checks back in, senior Drew Connor takes a seat. Second free throw is up and good. Much improved from the free throw line is Avery, shooting 67% from the charity stripe. IUPUI with that modest full court pressure. Ball is knocked back out of bounds. Angela, you have to reach up and get that. Did you duck? <laughs> Did you duck? He'll call me you're out. Not, you're not that far removed from your playing days. I mean, we're talking like months. I should have just palmed that out yeah, of the air. Yeah, huh? how nice would that have been just to grab it right out it. of the air. I yeah, got that's it. That's mine, and then hand it to the official. 9-7, <laughs> Jags trailing Montgomery. Now it's Patterson, rather, misses his first three, and Avery fighting underneath. How about that? Fighting amongst three guys, comes away with it. And Avery, an opportunity to go back to the line. It looked like half the team quit on it, except for number except 20. Except for John Avery. Look, yeah. Yeah, that's what you want to see out of Avery. See that intimidation factor. Get down there. Foul will be called on Adam Liddell, his first. Free throw is good. Four points now in the early going for Avery. 9-8, IUPUI travel, trailing with 14.36 to play. Next one is up and good. It's so nice to see John Avery hit free throws this season, Scott. I tell you what, we last season it was rough. But my man John practiced during the summer, got it done, and he's shooting very well from the free throw line. Well, by hitting free throws, he's finding himself in the game in the last five minutes of games, exactly. whereas last year you hit that six-minute mark, and he, was, he was taking a seat, not yep. this year. Shot clock approaching 15. Nice pass from Quaintance. And Liddell finishes with his second dunk of the night. And Liddell is just getting up and somehow get out of the way in that lane and just booming over everybody. Well, now checking into the game, the young legs of the freshman and Leroy Nobles drives baseline, and a foul is 